This video is made for adult collectors because HasLab. Haslev Victory Saber has finally come out in North America. Not only did Pulse not tell anyone it was shipping, FedEx just dumped it on my steps at 9 in the morning. So that's great. But hey, it's here now and people are starting to post pictures all over the place. It's quite cool seeing everybody enjoy it. With this being a more prestige product from Hasbro, they made sure every part of it feels premium down to the unboxing. Sor sorta. Sort of. The sleeve and layered box thing is great along with the reversible nature of the sleeve and the cardboard print you get out of the box. I would have wished this was on poster back, but oh well. But then you got the plastic trays and the ties and this was definitely designed before the switch to environmental packaging. This plastic stuff also brings its first problem. Chrome scratching. The toys are packed with two ties over the chests and that can scratch the chrome on the front. I got lucky with mine, but a couple people haven't. Knowing toy hacks, once their stickers come out, they'll probably have some shiny gold stickers to go over all that. But I feel like that's just bad packaging design to put the ties there. Mine does have a slight scratch, but that's about it. Once he's free though, and we get everything decked out, it's so nice to look at. You know I love Star Saber and Victory Leo's design, so this is just heaven to look at. There is a lot you get in this package. So we will start small and work our way up, starting with the Brain Master. He is smaller than my thumbnail and very easily lost, so please be careful. You could probably be very close to this, breathe in through your nose and it'll vanish, because it'll be in your nasal passage. Micromasters, their legs fall off and I personally don't really care about them, so moving on to Saber. <laughs> Pressing this button on the back releases the boy and man, that is a lot better than the masterpiece. It's just, I hate removing the masterpiece one. He looks nice. It's so weird to see the sheer amount of paint on a Hasbro product, but it looks very nice. The lines are clean and the tooling really works well with that paint. It's almost like when you give the Hasbro designers a much bigger budget, they do a lot better of a job on these things. The arms do look a bit spindly to me and the legs are a bit chunky. Makes it feel slightly disproportionate, but it's not terrible. I really love the way they did the head. The Brain Master slots into the chest and sits in a rotating chamber that's attached to the head, which allows you to swivel the head side to side to like make his neck articulation work. I think that's super neat. He has a nose, but it's not painted, so it does make the visor look like it's just one big old solid chunk there. There's no definition to the nose, and I'm not the biggest fan of that. I kind of wish they'd painted it. You can also plug the nose cone into his shoulder and give him the gun that fits super loosely in the hand of mine to make him look like this, which I, I really like this actually. He looks quite cool. He is small, like Huffer small, but it's a pretty nice and unassuming size for someone as important as him. That is until you combine him, but we'll get to that later. There's also a yellow arrow on his peepee, -pee, 10 out of 10. His posing is nice, everything is pretty standard, and the extra range the arms have is always welcome. And because his wrists are on ball joints, they swivel too, which is nice. His ankles are a tad limited, and that's going to be a running theme in this set, because they didn't really put that much emphasis on these parts which is really annoying, it's a shame. And his waist joint doesn't work properly unless you activate the ab crunch. But he has an ab crunch, I wasn't expecting that. His transformation's pretty simple. It's very much just the G1 toy with some extra flair and you're gonna hear me say that a lot. Once this is done, you get Tiny Jet. It's a nice small jet. I love deluxe jets and kinda want him to make more and that's why I'm excited for Needle Nose. The paintwork on the wings is super lush. The way they did those Autobot symbols on that white over that red, just works very nicely and the Brain Master sits in the cockpit and it's just a cool looking jet but that's all it really does. But I like Saber. He's very very cool. If they were just to sell him as his own deluxe I think it would be a very good standalone figure. Now let's get on to the Cowardly Lion. I mean Victory Leo. <laughs> My mom was the one who said he looks like the Cowardly Lion from the Wizard of Oz. Not gonna lie, this is my favorite figure of the set. He looks so dumpy, but in a good way. I love the color separation, the painted parts are pretty nice, but I do wish the white used an extra coat, just one more coat, but eh, whatever. Let's talk stickers. He has two stickers that go here. Oh no, it's a Hasbro project and they gave it stickers. Boo, Hasbro L. Bruh, calm down. 
This is unpaintable plastic, so they gave us stickers to still add color to this. Why is it unpaintable? Well, it's the double hinge wing piece. It needs to be strong, so they use like that palm material or whatever it's called. So that's why. Structurally, it's necessary, so I don't care. Now, are the stickers good quality? No. They, they tear way too easily, so please be careful. Again, I really hope Toy Hacks makes a sheet for this guy. They're not as bad as Titan's Return stickers in the sense of them falling off, because Titan's Return stickers would constantly fall off. They're just very thin. They're extremely thin and wibbly, so just be careful with them. I also have this weird issue where the leg on mine will just split at the combined joint, which is strange. It thoops into place, I can feel it, but it doesn't hold in on its side. It I just need to thicken it up, but you know, this is a HasLab, that shouldn't be a problem. I very much like how this looks next to the G1 version. I absolutely loved that toy, and this one is just that, but with more joints. It's great. So Victory, actually, you know what? I, I had a comment the other day that was kind of funny and someone asked why I film in the corner here and it's because the rest of the desk looks like this. Anyways, Victory Leo's posing is pretty good except for he's missing like one thing that you would consider a modern standard joint, but there's a reason for that. So the head rotates, but it only goes that far either way because the ears of the lion bump into his little shoulder pad sections there. The shoulders can rotate. They look like they would rotate on a weird angle just because of the way the shoulder pads are sculpted, but they don't. So I, I like that. You got in and out, bicep rotation, a single jointed elbow that bends very far. Very tight wrist swivels. Ah, don't like that. He's missing a waist joint. The reason he's with, uh, I can't speak English apparently. The reason he's missing a waist joint is because this entire thing bisects in half. And that would not be very good to put a waist joint there, especially considering these become feet. So they need to be stable in a combined mode. The hips, ratchet forward and back all the way, which is very nice. They go in and out on a very soft ratchet. And then again, this one just sort of moves on that joint. <clears throat> Excuse me. You get a thigh rotation on a double mushroom peg. You... This is annoying me. So my little thigh thigh shin piece things in the back of the calf and all that don't peg in super well so I have to hold them when I bend the knee and then it works perfectly fine but if I don't hold it for example it just comes out it is a tad bit infuriating all I need to do is just thicken this up because this one stays in perfectly fine but this one doesn't so I just need to get in there and thicken that up same with that piece there and then he has no ankles because his feet are giant blocks but he has toe pivot so that can kind of give sort of the look that he's tilting at the ankles and it honestly doesn't look that bad. It actually works. So I like that. His transformation is just the G1 toys, but slightly more involved. Collapsing the legs is like Combiner Wars. Man, they really love that conversion, don't they? I do wish the lion mane had a locking point, like when you expand it, because it's really easy to squish it back into place. And one of my friends told me that someone has experienced chipping around the black panel hinge thing. I don't know where that thing would chip, but apparently it is, so just, you know, bear that in mind. Lion mode, though, is the best mode to me. This looks funky, but in a cool way, and I like it a lot. His tail is still pointless, though, but it looks nice. It's great to finally have a Victory Leo with his guns, because boy, does that make this thing look a lot better. What's also nice is the colorful nature of the robot isn't lost in this mode. He still looks as eye-catching and as vibrant. Shame the worst point of the stickers is now fully visible in your view, which is the crease part. His articulation is eh, it's pretty lacking. I do wish they gave it a bit more in the back legs, like outward movement of some kind would have been nice, but oh well. On to brick jet mode. This is just compressing him and turning him around and plugging his BFG on to form this thing bruh it's just a block it is a platform to carry his gun i like how the lion arms tab into the wings to hold them in place which is a nice touch over the original but there's still a big problem with this alt mode that i've noticed there is no landing gear which on the surface is not bad but there is a lot of painted parts on the bottom of this when the toy sits on those that's gonna scratch so what I would do is fold the lion feet down a bit and fold the robot toes down to form landing gears of sort to elevate him up off the ground. He really needed his own like set of landing gear because that's HasLab. I've never been a huge fan of the jet mode, but it does combine with Star Saber's alt mode and you get this thing, which is neat. I, I hate combining it though, but I guess this is a good time to bring up the stand. 
It looks so clean. I adore the big V and its orientation. You can just peg the adapter in the Star Saber and have the whole thing elevated off the ground on a slight angle. I like this better than the Masterpiece one, even though the Masterpiece ones was more integrated because it was the shield. Now onto Star Saber himself. Slotting in Saber is super easy and the gray panels actually tab into the legs to hold them in place better. And you get this wonderful looking thing. Now that, that is what I'm talking about. It looks so much more vibrant over the MP. I do wish the head had a similar system to the masterpiece though. It just sort of parts forms off, which is fine, but it would have been nice to have that little hinge thing again. I mean, you know, Haslab. He's big, like old leader big, which is a nice chunky size and the plastic. That's one thing I haven't mentioned yet, but on every single thing this guy comes with, it feels dense and weighty. I dig it. All the line work is nice and clean and it feels like the tooling lines are deep into the plastic because it's thicker. I don't know, that's just something I've noticed is the tooling lines are a lot more defined on this guy than any other figure I've bought recently. He's one of those toys that looks good just standing there. He feels so dynamic in like a straight standing pose, but he's no slouch at posing. Here's some shots of him doing stuff that the masterpiece could only dream of doing. does the jet fire port disappear into the hands thing which is very nice and he can hold his big sword like an idiot seriously why does he have the flat part facing forward what are you gonna do smack a man with the sword as opposed to slicing him bruh well hasbro also thought of that and it allows you to actually slot the sword in forward so it's actually useful as a blade thank you very much he still holds my copy's gun pretty loose so i need to thicken that peg up but the gun is nice the shield looks very nice though that glossy blue stripe on the front is clean and the handle feels very very gundam like like the the gm kits you would get where the shield has the handle that can go anywhere on it and rotate and stuff it feels like that and it mounts on the arm too which is great and the sword blade stores in the legs uh gotta love weapon storage now his articulation is just wild because not only does he have the joint that victory leo was missing but he's got a lot more stuff in him so the head can only rotate so far just because of how the inner working of saber's neck works which is fine, you don't really need it to go any further. Maybe a little bit further would have been nice, but eh, it's not that bad. He can look up and down as well. However, you do start to expose Saber's head if you do that. And if you go down too far, you start pushing the face in. So yeah, same sort of problem as the masterpiece. Shoulders can rotate on ratchets. They do full 360. You also get a butterfly joint that's ratcheted. That's nice. Shoulders in and out. They only go out that far. Kind of wish they could go a little bit further. That's a bit annoying. Bicep rotation, double jointed elbow with a ratchet at the base, wrist rotation and the fingers open and close and they shift in and out. You got a waist joint and an ab crunch, which goes pretty far for how big this guy is. Getting it back though is a bit of a pain. I feel like I'm gonna break it every time. I don't like that. Hip skirts can go in and out. These are on C clips and this one likes to pop off a little bit for me. So yeah. They go forward that far, they go back. Nice ratchet. They can go out all, all the, see, there it goes. There it goes. It can go out all the way. You get a thigh swivel, you get a knee bend, just a little under 90 degrees because of this tab there. And then the ankle pivots, mine are terrible. They pivot, but then bounce right back and they don't pivot very far and this one clicks. So I'll, I don't touch the ankle pivots and you got you got toe toe bend if you want that. So he's very posable for what he is, which is nice. There's just a couple of couple of weird limitations that are just odd. Oh, and with Saber, he can mini pooth. Love that. His transformation again is the G1 toy with some extra twists, something super fancy and snazzy but you get a base mode, sure. <laughs> He's just doing the splits. The, the shield doesn't even stay on properly. I don't like this. Throw him into V-Star mode. This is a thing. I, I mean, at least he has landing gear though. You plug Saber into the front of this and yeah, that's the stuff right there. 
He can also mega poof, so you know, 10 out of 10. Gonna say this right now though, I don't like all the visible screw holes all over this guy. The five millimeter ports, totally okay, but there's so many other screw holes on it. It just looks pretty ugly. But other than that, yes, I love this. The shield can cover up the gap on the back too, if that's something that bothers you. And this is a nice alt mode. I love the way the wings are slightly bent. That's something that wasn't on any of the other versions and it looks really nice to me. And the cannons on the front are posable and blast effect compatible, so yay. Kind of, kind of, kind of wish they used new blast effects and not just jet fires again, but whatever. Now let's get everything back into robot mode so we can do the big boy. The reason you buy this. Takuda Nuva, I mean Victory Saber. <laughs> Combining it is exactly like how the G1 toy does it. While the backpack can attach to other figures, I really wish the feet could too. That seems like such a missed opportunity, but at the end of the day, this is massive. Like, it's very big. At least this is stronger and more stable than Titan's Return Jinrai. I've heard that thing just falls over constantly. This is wonderful. I'm sorry, but it looks great. It's big, it's imposing. You still retain all the posability of Star Saber, but the balance is a bit meh now. Because he does gain heals with these new feet, but they aren't the biggest, and he's back and top heavy now, so you gotta be a little careful. Thankfully, the ratchets are really strong in his leg. And now with the massive fuck you cannon and his sword, oh boy, he looks awesome. Even with all the faults, I still think it's a very nice thing, considering you're getting five toys in one package, and they're exclusive. The price is high, but it does seem worth it, because... You're getting so much play value in here, so much material in here as well. The experience of opening it and all that, it is a high price to pay for something like this. And I know a lot of people aren't comfortable paying that price for something like this, but it feels worth that price. You know what I mean? Death Swords, to me, doesn't feel like he's worth that price as much because there's less play value in Death Swords than there is in this guy. But I still bought a Death Swords anyways. Now on the topic of QC. This is a HasLab. There's less of them out there, so there's more people posting about them if they have issues. And while it's issues on only a few copies, they've become more apparent. And with this being something so limited and exclusive, it shouldn't have those issues. One of my friends told me something interesting though in regards to this. Because they make so little and they're made to order, they can't just take the bad copies and throw them back into the melting pot like you would a normal deluxe or commander or whatever. Thus, the copies with issues end up making it out to people. And it's a shame, because that means a handful of people are going to get releases that have poor quality control. But Hasbro is known for replacing broken or problematic parts on Haslabs. They are still giving people replacement parts for Unicron and the Sentinel. So yeah, email them if you have issues, please. They will most likely sort you out. But I like this a lot. I'm glad to have it. Now bring that Death Source. She's at his $230. That's going to hit me in a few days. Pain. <laughs> but I like this. It's great. How the hell are you gonna get one? That's the biggest question here. Usually you watch a product review to figure out if you should buy something. This guy goes for $500 on eBay now. Um, so that's gonna be interesting. TF Source, to everybody's surprise, posted this guy at $230, which was a very good price for this on the aftermarket. I'm hoping BBTS does the same because they did that twice with Unicron. So we'll see but its value has gone up. But that's my look at HasLab Victory Saber. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.